Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So we've been extremely wrapped up in the Hinman emails over the last 24 hours and what has been going on uh, over there that we're kind of missing what is going on with the SEC and Binance hearing because that is another big case that uh, I think, well, I mean, I think it deserves some attention as well. And, uh, you know, if the Hinman emails were not coming out, we would be focused on this, I think, in a greater capacity. Well, Meta Lawman here posting this, Judge does not enter the SEC's requested asset freeze order. So uh, for those of you guys who did not know, there was a, an order that was requested to freeze assets at Binance.us. But now that the Hinman emails have come out, I think the judge might be taking a bit of a different look at the SEC, uh, considering all the inconsistencies. And if you guys didn't see the video I did this morning, I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner. We went over uh, some other attributes of the Hinman emails that although maybe for the XRP community wasn't meh, a home run, that there wasn't enough meat on the bone, so to speak. For the rest of the crypto industry, though, there was a lot of great uh, content, a lot of great points coming from those emails. So the judge encourages parties to try to come to an agreed compromise order and report back on Thursday. So guys, we have to wait till tomorrow for that to happen. The judge apparently caught on that there was no actual emergency. I am told the judge pressed the SEC lawyers on whether they had any actual evidence of Binance US customers' assets being moved overseas, and they had none. So <laughs> Cheng Bang Zhao calling out FUD when he sees it. Of course, uh, you know, the recent Hinman emails probably didn't uh, bode well for the SEC in this case too. The Binance defendants have filed their opposition to the SEC's motion for an asset freeze order. They have proposed a reasonable compromise order that would secure the assets of Binance.us customers, place the private keys in the hands of US uh, personnel and provide for an accounting of Binance US assets. And not surprisingly, the SEC has refused to agree to the order. But now guys, the judge has said, uh, no, you got to do it. <laughs> you got to do it, you scumbags good on them. So the New York Times is reporting that at the hearing uh, th that she, Judge Berman, expressed skepticism about the SEC's use of its enforcement powers to regulate the crypto world, calling it inefficient and cumbersome. Now, this is coming from a separate judge altogether, uh, and this is in the New York Times. So this is big news. Metal Lawman here continuing. It sounds like the hearing in the SEC versus Binance went even worse for the SEC than I had heard. According to a Coinbase article, the judge hammered the SEC attorneys about their intransigence on the freeze order, the judge was also frustrated by the SEC's inability to answer the simple question of whether U.S. customers' assets had been transferred overseas. The judge said, It's stunning that I've asked each of you SEC attorneys this. This Coindesk article is the most thorough report I have seen on the hearing. And guys, I've got the Coindesk article up here uh, outlining uh, you know, more of the details. I'm not going to read the full thing, uh, but of course, again, I will link it in the description of the video. Just up here though, at times the judge seemed frustrated by the responses she was hearing when asked whether uh, any Binance US customers funds had actually left the US after multiple SEC attorneys said uh, they were mainly concerned about the fact that Binance's global platform controlled enough private key shards to move funds. I want to know if it's happening or not, she says. It's stunning that I've asked each of you this. Wow. Um, you know, the, the courts are losing patience, I think, with the SEC. And uh, I mean, for good reason, uh, you know, considering what did happen with the Hinman emails yesterday. Boy, this is this is going to be this is popcorn time. You know, when you see those memes with the guy eating the popcorn is just wanting to see it unfold. I was just kind of hoping it would happen uh, at a bit of a quicker pace. Nevertheless, it is what it is, guys. Uh, so I wanted to thank Meta Lawman here for giving us some insight on that. And I will link all this in the description of the video. On top of that, guys, this is what happened to BNB coin price. Interesting timeline. So a post about BNB manipulation goes viral. That is number one over here. That's where we saw the market uh, take a bit of a dip. And for those of you guys uh, who did not catch that, BNB coin did in fact dip, but now it is on the rebound. And it's funny, even when I just take a look at BNB, uh, we, we did see this initial dip after the Binance lawsuit. So Binance Coinbase lawsuit. But when you zoom out of this, take a look at that. It doesn't actually look that bad. We haven't even seen the same bottoms that we saw back last year in June of 2022. Uh, once we got all that news, Terra Luna, Celsius, all that stuff, that really kind of bottomed the market out for a bit. And even when FTX collapsed uh, and the market went lower, BNB coin actually made a higher low. So it's a strong coin, guys, and uh, I don't know if this is really even going to, um, you know, have an effect. I mean, Binance US is a, and it's its own exchange. It's not Binance.com, which is the big guy. And even on this news, we hit support down here, and now we're seeing BNB coin rebound back up. 
Uh, so he goes on to say CZ responds to deny and yell FUD, and then BNB pumps 7% immediately after the rest of crypto remains flat. So this is what we're seeing here. I think the SEC has really underestimated the power of Binance and the power of CZ and his Twitter followers. And the fact that the Binance exchange, uh, the global Binance exchange is still doing very, very well worldwide. So on top of that, what else do we have here? Parrot Capital tweeted this out. Kraken warning. If you guys are using the Kraken exchange, Kraken is shutting down user accounts and refusing to disclose why. So this is getting very, very strange. Um, this probably, I mean, if I were to speculate on this, this probably has to do with what's going on uh, in the US with regards to the Binance and Coinbase lawsuits now. So now Coinbase is saying, you know, unfortunately, we must inform you that we will be closing your Kraken account for security purposes. We cannot disclose the reason for this action. Kindly note that you may no longer use our services. That, or maybe this guy was doing something shady, I do not know. But it was coming from Crypto Harry here, uh, initially a fairly prominent member here over on Crypto Twitter. So it is getting very, very interesting. Another scam that uh, Jacob Canfield here wanted to let us know about. If you guys are using Coinbase, I just got attacked by one of the most complex scams in crypto that I have seen to date. So guys, do not fall prey to this. It just happened 15 minutes ago. This is a warning to all Coinbase users. There's been some sort of data breach. First, I received a text message saying that my Coinbase two-factor authentication uh, was changed. And then I received three calls from Coinbase customer support, which were the scammers. And they said that they needed to change his email. I said no uh, to traveling. And they said that they had canceled my 2FA and the email change uh, request and sent a text to verify that it was canceled. Then they sent me to a security team to verify my account to avoid a 48-hour suspension. They had my name, my email, and my location and sent a verification code email uh, to help at coinbase.com to my personal email. I told them that I didn't need their assistance and that I changed the password already and he told me that they wouldn't work to verify the account and that they would be locking it down for seven days due to lack of verification unless I provided the code. So that, you know, first red flag there, it is a scam. He then got angry and hung up. You know, when, when customer service is getting a, or customer support is getting angry at you, you know 100% that's a scam. After the first text, I immediately logged into my Coinbase and changed the password and caught on that this was a scam almost immediately, but I doubt that 98 to 99% of people uh, that get this would realize it and would have unlocked their Coinbase account. Account. So guys, just be careful because, you know, these hackers, uh, in some cases, they have your phone number, your full name, uh, your address. So just be careful. These kinds of scams are happening all the time. I know I've even got a call from uh, what was in quotes, customer support from Coinbase, and I don't even have a Coinbase account. So just be careful, guys keep your cryptocurrency safe. And I know, I mean, you might not want to use it. The Ledger Nano though is still a product that I use. And right now you can save 30% on a Ledger Nano color. And this offer is ending soon. So I do have an affiliate link in the description of the video. You can use it if you want. Don't have to use it. I just thought I'd let you guys know there because now you can save 30% on the colored Ledger Nano wallets. I don't know how many more days this is, but I don't think it's going to be lasting for much longer. Be careful guys, because scammers are abound. I mean, you know, they're taking advantage of the crypto situation and the landscape of uncertainty. I'm very surprised too, that there is so much uncertainty and that, uh, you know, US government has not gotten their ducks in a row uh, and that it is such a mess. Crypto shouldn't be this difficult to corral. And you would think that the issue would be pressing considering Janet Yellen has come out and said this, should expect a slow decline in the US dollar as the reserve currency. So Janet Yellen just yesterday did come out, say this treasury secretary says to expect a slow decline in US dollar as the reserve currency, which means that not everybody is going to be using US dollars moving forward and that that number is going to move down slowly, but surely uh, she said that there should be an expectation of a slow decline in the US dollar as reserve currency. Moreover, the statement arrives uh, amidst international de-dollarization efforts employed by a host of countries, including the BRICS nations. So, you know, when we're seeing these BRICS nations already agreeing upon other systems and, uh, you know, Russia creating their alternative to SWIFT, so on and so forth, it's all a recipe for US de-dollarization. At the same time, though, DLT platforms are really going to take off. Yellen had previously stated her expectation that the US dollar would remain unchanged as the global reserve currency. So there you go. Flip-flopping again on that point. Um, I mean, she has an easy out there saying, well, I mean, things have changed. But I mean, we've all known this. Come on, you can't put it past us. However, it appears as though recent developments have shifted her stance on the matter. Uh, Yellen expects a slow decline. The reserve currency status of the US dollar has been a constant headline over the last several months. Indeed, as international trade has worked to de-dollarize itself, the currency 
has seen a lessening prevalence, subsequently appearing at the U.S. House for Financial Services Committee meeting today. One prominent voice in American finance spoke on the matter. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says that there should be an expectation of a slow decline of the U.S. dollar as the currency, the reserve currency specifically, in statements that differ from others. She had said last month discussing the same issue. So just, uh, you know, reiterating that same point here. I'm telling you guys, you cannot trust these people one bit. I mean, they will flip-flop, but I mean, it goes without saying, if you're just following the money, if you're following what other countries are doing around the world, it's no surprise to us. DLT platforms are really taking off, and this is why Ripple is also making big moves. Guys, I happen to see this from Mike Manfield with regards to Bitstamp, okay? We recently got some Bitstamp news that was related to Ripple when Ripple acquired Pantera's stake in the company. Well, now guess what's going on, guys? Bitstamp secures registration as a crypto asset service provider by the FCA. So this is the Financial Conduct Authority in the United Kingdom. This brings the number of global licenses and registrations of the Bitstamp group to 52, making Bitstamp one of the most secure and compliant actors on the global market. So Bitstamp looking to be a big player in this, and Ripple has a larger stake now in Bitstamp. Bitstamp is the first crypto exchange to be registered by the FCA since the UK Treasury set out a consultation on February the 1st uh, to strengthen regulation of crypto asset activity, which marked the next stage of the UK's approach to regulation. This status demonstrates that Bitstamp is offering to the same financial standards and customer protections that traditional financial institutions must adhere to with anti-money laundering, AML, and counter-terrorist financing protections. Through this registration, Bitstamp has been recognized as consistently operating to the highest standards in the UK, providing compliant and secure access to crypto in the region as required by the FCA. The world's longest-running crypto exchange is now registered to offer the following services to UK retail and institutional customers. And then, guys, it lists off a whole bunch here: crypto uh, custody assets of crypto a- or custody, excuse me, custody of crypto assets, the purchase or sale of crypto assets in legal tender, and trading of crypto assets against other crypto assets. So they're making big moves specifically in the UK. We know Ripple has a tight partnership with the UK and Mike Manfield also bringing up the fact that uh, if you guys remember last month, Ripple did acquire a larger stake in Bitstamp through Pantera's stake. So great news here. Wanted to thank Mike for posting that. Matthew L-I-N-Y also bringing this to our attention. E9Pay partners with Ripple Partner Currency Cloud to transform the way South Korea's merchants transfer funds globally. South Korea-based money transfer operator E9Pay has partnered with UK-based cross-border payments platform Currency Cloud to launch the new E9Pay collection service. And following this launch, the new E9Pay collection service will enable merchants and traders, as well as SMEs, e-commerce players, and exporters that are based in South Korea to send and collect funds efficiently and securely with customers around the world, starting with the United States. By integrating Currency Cloud's APIs into its already existing platform, E9Pay will prioritize its plan to facilitate international payments for Korea's globally focused B2B market. So more integration essentially with uh, small to medium-sized enterprise businesses. Cross-border payments platform Currency Cloud offers enterprises and firms the opportunity to transfer money across borders and to make payments globally in multiple currencies. The technology provided by the company offers clients the possibility to transfer funds in an easy, fast, and secure manner by leveraging digital wallets and incorporating embedded finance into the core of their business. So we know Currency Cloud partnered with Ripple has been for a while. They are now making more moves, uh, partnering with E9Pay. And you can see, guys, these are strategic moves in different areas of the world, like this one particularly, South Korea, an operator that is now connected through a Ripple-enabled company to run payments specifically for SMEs through the B2B market. So here we're seeing more adoption, more of these companies realizing the transactions are going to run more seamlessly if they run on superior technology. So that's great news. Wanted to thank Matt for posting that. This video clip has been circulating around as well. Now, this is an older clip, guys. This is from 2014. But what's interesting is the context, and I know some people were watching this and wondering, did he just say to short XRP or to short Ripple? Things that make you go, hmm, what does he know? Is it something we should be worried about? Let me give you some context, okay? So this is David and Delfado, and a couple of years ago, I did a video on this same guy. I'm gonna play you a clip of this video. They're really bullish on XRP. And this guy, by the way, is part of the Federal Reserve of St. Louis. Okay, listen to this. Was because I saw this tweet here, guys. This from Jamil Kays. Uh, When you are shaken up, we look at this real value in the protocol with real utility. Buy and sit back. Just watch the show. He tagged me in this tweet. And this is David and Fado from guess where? The Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Listen to what he has to say. And then what I can see coexisting alongside this institution is something like a a Ripple platform, that that currency agnostic peer-to-peer payment system I just described that facilitates low-cost payments. So 
you know, potentially consumers can bypass Western, you know, that $10 service fee, I mean, that's going to be a thing of the past. I mean, uh, with Ripple, you'll be able to send money anywhere in the world for very, very, very low cost. So that's something that could uh, come together, kind of this marriage of, uh, well, I thought I'd end on a happy note. <laughs> Don't they make a lovely couple? <laughs> Thank you very much. I look forward to your questions. So that was a video, that was the tail end of the video uh, where he does discuss Ripple and XRP. There was another clip uh, to that and I'm gonna play you guys this one as well. This is from the same presentation. Now, um, these clips are disjunct. I don't know why, they're all over the internet and I believe that this presentation was actually um, cut up into chunks originally and so we're only getting fragments of this. Let me play you guys this clip as well. The effect of this and similar rulings serve to diminish the attractiveness of Bitcoins as currency. Does anybody use Ripple? Wow, I think you guys might be the winners because Ripple is a currency agnostic protocol. You know, Bitcoin relies, Bitcoin wants to be the money. Ripple, it, they have their native currency, but they don't necessarily, Ripple is a, a protocol that works very similarly to, to Bitcoin, but it's more interested in, in facilitating and processing payments, but it'll, it'll process US dollars, euros, bitcoins, it's native currency, it's currency agnostic. And so it's quite possible that uh, this ruling actually benefits the uh, payments processors as opposed to the uh, virtual currencies that really want to be uh, competing currency. So did you guys just hear that? This tweet was actually brought to my attention by Ian Northing. He asks, do any of you guys own Ripple? Wow, you might just be the winners here. This is David and Delfado of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Ian Northing was kind enough to send me the original video here, and so I found this. Uh, I found this from the Federal Reserve Bank's official or official Twitter page, not Twitter page, YouTube channel, and um, you know they're they're broken up into several clips. What I was really more interested in was the date here. He was talking about this as early as 2014. David and Delfado from the Fed back in 2014 suggesting, you know, people that are holding Ripple, or he means XRP, are in fact the winners here. So to me, he sounds very, very bullish on Ripple and XRP. Let's also not forget guys back uh, last month in May, uh, May 26, 2023, DJ Peter Vass posted this. The Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank mentioned XRP as an international payment medium. So we know the Fed is very cognizant of XRP and its utility that's going to move forward. Now, this was a clip that I didn't see from that same interview until today. U.S. Federal Reserve directly asked about Ripple and how U.S. payments can coexist with the Ripple protocol. But listen to what he said at the beginning here, guys. Listen to this. Uh, David, fantastic presentation. Thank you. Um, I'm one of the fellows who raised his hand uh, when you asked who uses Ripple, uh, Joe and myself. Uh -huh. um, and I just want to say, you know, it's very... Uh, I'm very happy to see that someone in the St. Louis Fed respects it at the very least. Um, and I'm sure that from all the good things you've said about it, many people in this room would like to hear more. But um, you, you mentioned um, that you foresee a uh, peer-to-peer currency agnostic payment clearance system such as Ripple coexisting with institutions such as central banks in the United States. And my question is, what do we, how are we going to see that happen? What is it going to take? So thank you very much. Uh, and, you know, all the nice things I said about Ripple, everybody now knows to short it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, how do I see it? I mean, you know, like, like you said, Ripple is a currency agnostic uh, platform. It really doesn't care too much about creating and managing its money supply, although it does have its native money supply. So, uh, you know, it's, it's doing, in my, the way I exposited the idea, Ripple is handling the processing of payments for many of the world's unbanked people, okay? And that the Fed is, is uh, uh, one institution that's providing a type of currency that people could, could use as payment using the Ripple protocol. But there may be other currencies. There could be Bitcoin, there could be the yen. So, I mean, I, I see room for coexistence. I mean, I, that's, I see it today. I, I don't see any reason to doubt why it might not continue in the future. Okay, so I mean, still fairly bullish on XRP. Well, Ripple, I mean, they call it Ripple. It is 2014 when uh, XRP and Ripple were commonly considered the same thing. But what about what he says before answering the question? Thank you very much. Uh, and, you know, all the nice things I said about Ripple, everybody now knows to short it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody knows 
to short it. The end is near caught on to that. Everyone knows to short it. Interesting statement there. XRP Von Fuvu even saying, you know, they refuse to say XRP. And then he says everyone knows to short it. They definitely want everyone out. No, I don't know if it's that, guys. I think it's something personally as simple as making a joke. And the reason I say that is because look at this lady's uh, reaction when he says it, okay? Uh, and, you know, all the nice things I said about Ripple, everybody now knows to short it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shaking her head. Did you guys see that? Her shaking her head? No, he's just kidding. Yeah, he's just kidding around. Even David N. Elfato and this other gentleman here having quite a laugh over the comments. That said, guys, I think they know we're on to something big. Personally, the Fed sounds bullish on XRP. The XRP community has been bullish on XRP for quite some time. And to be honest, I think it's just about the regulatory clarity. And that is going to get cleared up in due time. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.